All right, chip of the day. Actually, we've got four different types of chips of the day. Um, these are little tiny, little UHF uh, transistors, okay? And uh, yeah, they'd be tiny. And we'll talk about that package type and stuff. But uh, let's take a look at the back. And it says mini circuits. So yeah, these are the good ones. So mini circuits. This says MAR-6. This one says MAR-8. This one says MAR-1. And this one says MAR-4. So we got one, four, six, eight. Okay, and so what does that mean? <laughs> well, here's here's a nice little thing here. It says uh, JVC stock five of eighty seven. So yeah, these are vintage uh, yellow. I don't know what yellow means. That's kind of weird. I don't know. Um, so let's take a look at some data sheets. Now these are pretty vintage, so I think. The MAR1 has been replaced with the MAR1 plus. So if anybody knows, let me know what the plus means. So you can only get pluses these days. Um, so what are these things? These are called monolithic amplifiers, otherwise known as an MMIC, monolithic ICs, monolithic amplifiers. Um, so they're called mimics. And uh, they are basically... Uh, a little circuit that is a Darlington, okay, and they are designed to just ha need an output pull-up, and then they act as an amplifier, so they're easy to design amplifier type of things. Um, they are already matched to 50 ohms, so when you, when you, when you hook them up to something, they're already 50 ohms input. Um, and uh, they are good to 1 gigahertz, so they are on the high end of UHF, all the way up into microwave. Um, so DC to one gigahertz, so that's nice. 17.8 uh, dB of gain, noise figure of three and a half, yada, yada, yada. So um, let's take a look at the next one. This is an MAR4. And it's also DC to one gigahertz. Also, you know, it has a little higher uh, gain, 25 dB. But otherwise, otherwise the same thing. And then we have an MAR6, which is gain of 20, but it goes up to two gigahertz. So this one is higher frequency. So this one will take us farther up the road. Uh, so, but again, same part. And then the last one, the eight, goes back down to one gigahertz. So, but it has the highest gain. It is 31 dB of gain. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, it says it's the exact footprint substitute for the MAR8, which we have. This is the eight plus, the, right? These are all pluses. So I don't know what, like I said, I don't know the difference between the eight and the eight plus. But I do know the packages. So the packages are all micro X package, okay? And these are all micro X package. And the micro X package uh, has four wires on it, leg leads on it. And it has an input and an output, but then the two grounds. So that makes the PC board layout a little easier um, to control impedances and stuff. So this is a document that I found uh, this is from Mini Circuits, and the package types I have are the VV105, all right, and this is the preferred footprint. So I'm going to go into a KiCad and duplicate this drawing as a footprint for um, uh, any PC boards that I might lay out using these parts. So it's all um, dimensioned. It does have some interesting things. It has a bunch of stitching vias on the ground leads. And uh, let's see here, those, let's see, what does it say about those? 
Um, the holes are 20 thousandths of an inch. They're, they're pretty healthy holes for, for stitching. So we've got a bunch of holes to help the uh, RF ground and thermals go to the other side. And um, then we have the width of these guys. Now, we learned from other boards I've done that the width and the thickness of the board de determines the impedance. And if we want 50 ohms, then we have to control these things. Now, these are laid out to be 40, 40 thousandths of an inch wide. But what is the what is the thickness of the PC board in order to that, for that to be 50 ohms? Well, there's a, a note down here. It says the width shown is for Rogers RO4350B with dielectric thickness of 30 thousandths. Okay, so it's a quite thin PC board made out of Rogers material, copper, half ounce each. Um, so if we're going to use FR4, um, uh, type of PC board, a standard PC board, we'll have to pick a different thicknesses. And um, so we need to keep that in mind when we create this footprint. We're not quite sure what the, uh, what the width of these guys would be. The grounds doesn't really matter. We can probably just use this for any old thing um, and go from there. Let's look a little bit more on the data sheet. Um, we have, uh, we were already seeing the gain, but look at this return loss at uh, is is uh, specified from DC to one gigahertz return loss of 15.5 dB, and output return loss is also specified 11 dB. So 50 ohms is controlled. Uh, so that's interesting. Noise figure is 3 dB. That's pretty good. Um, and then uh, we can see here the case is the VV105. Plastic Micro X, blah, 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 blah. Um, suggested layout, PL260. Uh, so PL260. Yeah, so this is PL261. This is PL262. Maybe we can find a different drawing as well. It's, I don't know what the difference is between a 261 and a 262. It was a little bit difficult finding this drawing. Um, here's the recommended circuit layout. Uh, uh, capacitively coupled input output, uh, then the grounds. You have a, a, an RF choke feeding it, but then you also need to have this R bias. So it has a table here of bias values for different VZCs. So if we operate this thing, say, off of 12 volts, then we'd have a 226 ohm bias resistor. So we have to make sure our PC board layout includes this resistor uh, to do the biasing. And I'm not sure if, if that's common. Yeah, it's common with this part. Yeah, I think it's common across the board. All right. So that's a little bit different than I've done before, but that seems reasonable. So I'd say what we should do is uh, see if we can't scare up the uh, 262, and I'm sure this would be just fine if we can't find that, and we will create a footprint in uh, KeyCAD.